Remember two years ago the recurring subscribers uh, here on this channel I made a shout out uh, regarding the Seagate 4 terabyte, yes two and a half inch, uh, that's, that's what you get for 4 terabyte or in the meantime maybe 5. Anyway, um, this may uh, plant obsolescences, may destroy your hard drive and how to prevent it. Well at least um, this hard drive breaking news update destroyed and uh, how not to prevent it. Um, summary and quick update and conclusion. Um, why does this look slightly bent? Anyway, um, I noticed when I installed this not even three years ago, two and a half years something, that it was clicking a lot like server was inactive, click, clock, nah, and looked into the smart data and just after, you can watch this video, but I guess like not even a day or two, thousands of head load cycles, meaning parking the head or not. So I tuned that, I disabled that certainly. Um, I checked the, I think the, the spec was up to 300,000 or something, which uh, I need to check my own video what this would be. And anyway, I disabled this load cycle stuff because uh, certainly ain't the most good to every five minutes park um, the head and, and unpark it. Anyway, so this failed uh, spectacularly. Um, some things, so I've had two of these drives. I thankfully didn't put them into production because uh, this failed just a little bit too burning. Uh, in retrospect, I should have freaking fully returned it, but I thought, yeah, there were two and a half years, there was probably not a single other drive. Also, a spoiler alert, I so I barely used them, they, they were not running 24-7, um, probably not even half of the time, maybe maybe a fifth of the time or, or even less because this was our spare testing with, with data and Ryzen. Um, so yeah, not really good use for this money. Also, I'm surprised I would thought now yeah, two years, two and a half years, not, not three years, warranty, right? For sure you have three or five years warranty. No, unfortunately I checked the serial number, two years warranty. So yeah, thank you very much uh, Seagate uh, for that. That is uh, rather sad and hilarious. Um, for uh, also we always also take some positive things um, for me need to improve our t2 linux further uh, one thing is super annoying this was of course part of a modern lvm2 raid array i have two problems i mean first of all it's also somewhat hilarious that the server stuff doesn't come up uh, unless you um, volume group activate with dash dash activation mode partial I probably make this the default, leave in the comments below, uh, because in my opinion it doesn't make much sense if you have some workstation server it doesn't freaking come up in the init RD um, because some drive is missing or dead. <coughs> um, so yeah, probably I need to default to activation mode partial. Um, you just need to be obviously monitoring that and be careful and stuff. The second thing is it's also super annoying headless server stuff. I had this on my to-do already for a long time. There are some other Linux distribution of, of one of the 1000 782 new distributions that have in it RD with secure shell. I will probably make an option for that with drop beer as a tiny um, open SSH. It's just a little bit too large, but uh, makes this a default optional plugin or stuff. At least for me, I probably need this for me, super annoying. Um, you need to take this out of the uh, rack there and then plug in a graphic card on a, on a PCI extender stuff. Um, third of all, uh, what was third of all? Um, all right, so one thing is super annoying. I said this before, I migrated from, I never liked hardware, right? Too expensive, too limited, too proprietary vendor tool stuff. Uh, software, right? Uh, in, in theory, great. And with the good old fashioned Linux stuff that worked okay. Of course, now with latest and greatest, I migrated to LVM2 using this as right. I really have huge problems as the last time something failed on me. Um, which drive was it even? Anyway, the last time I had a similar issue three years ago, probably ironically when I got these drives, I couldn't get this drive hot edit. Um, I googled this and tried uh, to no avail. Uh, super hilarious. It was like um, for a working drive, like 
whatever volume group, whatever remove and add in. But that only worked if you still had the drive. If you didn't have the other drive, like they were like hilarious tutorials of recovering metadata and applying the old metadata to the new drive and some bullshit like this. I need to check, but leave in the comments below. Um, do you, what kind of rate do you use? Do you use good old fashioned, or do you use hardware rate because you are too rich? Do you use Linux software rate, old fashioned or new fashioned LVM2? And what is your experience? And uh, also in regards ever used secure shell in your init ID. The second thing is for what I would need this also data center and uh, other stuff. We increasingly converted to full disk encryption, everything. You never know who, where you lose a drive uh, or laptop or uh, someone gets to your server. And this is also full if you're wondering what is with this secure shell in the init ID. Um, yeah, you can also use it to unlock full disk encryption, right? So you have your, your server full disk encrypted ex except your kernel and init ID and um, boot into that, unlock your full disk encryption stuff in your data center and, and local stuff, uh, local rec mounted server. So some stuff to do in T2 as per usual. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, running better FS. So the better FS somehow totally corrupted. Also the other, this was a three three drive RAID 5 array with, um, as I said, uh, LVM2. And um, somehow the battery FS now is quite corrupted. I noticed already yesterday, yesterday this drive failed. And I noticed this live, right? Uh, it's um, I, Data was building updates and spare data about previous video update stuff. Also, yeah, just uh, rebuild the, the data change route and then the drive failed. Thank you very much. But I, this live failed while I was typing and I got IO errors and I was like, what the heck is going on now? And first of all, so not sure what more failed there or how this drive, also here yeah, is the quality of LVM2 and software rate stuff. You would think RAID 5 should exactly to protect you from this, but somehow Live this failed, not sure what went wrong there, but so much to that LVM2 and better FS code quality. And not even a fresh reboot with volume group, group change activate uh, activation mode partial. It activated that, I can mount it, but mounting that better FS gives quite some warnings and accessing a lot of stuff gives quite even more warnings. So um, yeah, something broke there in phenomenal ways um, and the recurring theme <laughs> dreaming increasingly of a more stable, more separated multi-server microkernel stuff in something that is not written in C because um, obviously they did not got that for the most part. So yeah, quite some stuff. Um, and right should be so easy, right? I mean, it's, it's certainly not volume group, although volume group stuff is also not the super most difficult, but right just issue the same commands to multiple drives, um, of course, with the respective logical offsets depending on your partition you might not have partitioned them the same but um, in any case uh, issue the same set of commands read write to uh, whatever kind of logical obstruction of uh, block devices basically block in summary block devices shouldn't be the most difficult if you get an io error then don't use it continue with the others mark it as a defect and stuff but um, in whatever ways this better FS failed on me. Um, it's like, yeah, maybe I should go back to XFS. Um, also some some features, of course, of better FS quite compelling, but if um, it failed on the data center, probably due to Clang, it failed here due to a failed uh, RAID 5 drive. Somehow um, 2021 is not starting the greatest uh, for me in terms of um, storage. You can't make this up, but that's so is live. And this is also why RAID is not a backup. Some people believe you just RAID it even more than RAID 5. But yeah, first of all, it can burn, it can get stolen, it can uh, fail and corrupt in other ways. And if this corrupts on a logical level with whatever bugs are there in um, your logical volume management or file system stuff, especially some people use better FS snapshots and stuff for um, kind of partitioning of some sub volumes for home and stuff. It's like, yeah, but if this corrupts then all your sub volumes um, are pretty corrupted. So, um, and if you use multiple drives, um, 
I often have a colorful mix. So another pro tip, just mix a couple of drives because here the same two same drives. Also the other drive still running, but in general, a good recommendation also take three different drives. Um, and uh, if one fails, then you minimize the risk of uh, not non-identical drives failing in the same day and week. So yeah, we have some stuff to do, including tweaking the initRD, uh, OpenSSH, uh, that is already on my to-do. Um, but yeah, just wanted to provide, provide an update on this stuff. I looked here briefly on the Blackblaze hard drive stats. For me, it's always yeah, not uh, what exactly. Also, the failure rate is surprisingly going down. Um, it's probably the summary. Um, maybe here was also the flood ones, right? So maybe here the assembly stuff uh, was more contaminated after floods with humidity. Um, and, and whatever uh, particles, maybe more than before or something. I'm not sure whether once there was a massive flood and, and whatnot. But yeah, right now it appears also, I, so this drive is exactly from, uh, of course, 2018. So thank you very much for that. Do we have a date? But it's 2000. Anyway, as usual, leave in the comments below what you found the years, what are your best tips and tricks and recommendations. And um, Comments, many Seagate drives and everything failed after two, three years, one of them after only one year. Yeah. Um, I have to say also, so this is also what you get, right? This is two and a half inch. This is also what you cram, what you get when you cram four terabytes uh, or more in, in just two and a half inches. This is a little bit higher, some 11 or 12 millimeter or something. So it doesn't fit in a laptop, but um, yeah, what I also didn't, I also last, probably last tip, this SMR, this single magnetic recording where the tracks overlap and the track is read and rewritten as a whole. Maybe not the most amazing. This is exactly also what I um, noticed. The performance was even so, not only the drive was clicking from the beginning, in which I disabled um, in the hope that improves longevity, but... Um, what did I want to say so much to I, uh, SM, SMR? The performance sucked ma uh, majorly. SMR, like magnetic recording. Let's end this with a nice graph of this stuff. Maybe uh, Vicky has a graph. Or yeah, here, so partial updating that. So with this overlapping, so that uh, you read a very small thing, but write a little bit larger, um, wider. Um, and um, then you need to rewrite multiple tracks there. Performance sucks. This has a massive cache, uh, maybe 256 megabyte of cache or something. But yeah, performance um, disappointing and longevity. It's like, yeah, my data, my data point of two drives didn't even dare to buy more. It's like, yeah. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, also, more people agree, agree than the comments. Uh, Seagate is the first bronze for hard drives, Toshi by Tachi. Western Digital are better. Um, yeah, I probably get a Western Digital drive. Uh, they have a right now, I um, coincidentally, coincidentally, they are not listed right now. I didn't find them anymore, this two and a half to buy. Maybe I get the two and a half Western Digital just for the server node, but in general I need to. I said this before, I made a video distributed storage file system and stuff I significantly for this year. New Year resolution significantly increase um, storage infrastructure here um, from the office to the data center and back. And um, for that, certainly, I probably will not use any more two and a half inch drives for that. I will probably take more regular high performance and hopefully less fragile three and a half inch drives. And uh, last but not least, people complaining. So I'm not even sure, although ironically, I have here a Seagate drive from the vintage video the other day. This one's still working from a Sun Ultra 5, which manufacturing date is that? Oh, also super slow, right? Pentium Pro video the other day. Uh, yeah, also how, how far have we come? Uh, where's the production date of this one? Four, four gigabyte, uh, four terabyte. It's like near um, progress and stuff. Uh, caution, product warranty is void if the top cover or any seal of the label is removed or if the drive 
experiences shock in excess of 75 G's, just so that you know. There's a freaking made in Malaysia, uh, fragile, I think. Uh, where would be the. Or here's some ah, date code 99, probably a uh, week, it's 9927. So, yeah, um, 22 years still working on uh, a slow piece of garbage. Uh, it's like, yeah, two years. Uh, miniaturization, progress, future. Yeah. Anyway, SMR. There you have it. What else do you have to say? Uh, also, I wanted to say the most drives that failed for me. So the last years, I, the last decades, I didn't have too many drives fail on me, honestly. Um, I had a couple of drives fail on me like 15, 16 years ago. This IBM, when IBM sold this to Hitachi, there was a, the, uh, was, was a Death Star or something. Not not desk star but death star, but yeah, this was the last time I had major failures. I probably sent like five or so to IBM for RMA. I probably still have one or two of those IBM RM8 there in vintage stock. Anyway, that's it. Let's take a quick look. Um, and uh, Marcos also agrees stopped using Seagate drives in general after a failed hard drive, three gigabyte uh, one. Suddenly failed. Yeah, also this, this suddenly failed. Also uh, last but not least probably. Um, I didn't have some smart D monitoring running there, so you definitely want um, probably some kind of monitoring running, although this was a test note. And also, super annoyingly, this doesn't um, properly communicate on the Serial ATA port anymore. May also, by, by the way, you probably want to share, like, and subscribe, given that this is dead and I have no warranty. We probably open that and look what's inside, because obviously that's what we do here to maximize the use of this failing stuff. So you probably want to share, like, and subscribe for that the next days. And um, so yeah, monitoring this stuff also so that you know when uh, something is failing. Uh, also, I wanted, all right, I actually so much to that. Um, digressed here a little bit. Um, and some people are tuning in and commenting, which is amazing. I actually had here, of course, a second camera so much to prepare your second camera. And uh, because I have this running um, here, and this is from the Inet RD, also do we? Oh, this was screen safer because, of course, it was screen safer in the frame buffer. And so this is that here, just uh, the other remaining drive also running self test. And um, so the other drive is some um, Western Digital, also, yeah, Western Digital three and a half inch, four terabytes that is still alive. and the self test I now run smart self test long self test um, ninety percent remaining thank you very much that will stay, take some while but that that drive well it's still alive and it completed a short offline test and uh, that is the other bloody Seagate and um, that is a self test so routine in progress ninety percent and. Um, so this, this is identical, so I got them the same day, I installed them the same day, so probably they should have the same power on hour. So this total drive failure is after 3903 power on hours. Um, power cycle count 647, that includes also some work from LAN, so I suspended that uh, a couple of times to RAM. This is not only boots, um, Slightly wonder why it's that high. Also, yeah. So to be fair, we used it as a test system. So yeah, it's it's probably like could be 200 real reboots potentially and 400 work from LAN or something. Uh, what really confused me from the beginning is that this raw read error rate was probably high already the first days. You you or I could double check this with my original video. This is a little bit confusing. Um, also, in general, I find this smart stuff a little bit with value versus thresholds, like, yeah, what the heck is now. But actual value is, like, high. Um, I think it was high from the beginning. And um, it has, however, is this reallocated. So this is, again, this is a second live drive, so reallocated sector counts. They should be relatively similar. The seek read, uh, raw read error rate and seek error rate somehow high, which it was from the beginning. Or probably this means pre-fail, I guess. So maybe this drives in general are garbage. Um, also command timeout, it's like, yeah, what the heck. I really wish this stuff would be better. Um, I'm 
I don't think this, by the way, airflow temperature min max, I don't really quite think this is lifetime because um, I think it probably got hotter than 36. Today it's fresh here on the open bench standing next to me here in this mini ITX case. Also, yeah, this is how you do the server recovery with a Matrox card and PCIe uh, riser cable, obviously, because, um, right, uh, previous video. And so this is probably not saved. Um, it would of course be smart from them to save this lifetime, but somehow I don't think, I think it was also, I think it was 2628. Do we still have that here? Scroll back if we are very lucky. Oh no, we don't because uh, scroll back is not something that... Anyway, um, also how much was written? LBA is written uh, some three there, three there. Yeah, we need to, would need to divide this uh, nicer anyway. But it didn't fail instantly, so it's still 90%. So the second drive is not totally dead yet. But just to document the um, LBAs, re read and written should be quite identical given it was a RAID 5 array and um, the lifetime stop and um, power cycle and um, why is been, why is spin up time so anyway by the way what was the uh, here's load cycle count what do we have there now um the way i did this in the init script right i just did there um smart um whatever sd tool so yes load cycle count is not that high 35,000. Uh, this is for sure running with my tuning there because otherwise i would probably have 300,000. so yeah, there we have that. Wanted to document those bits and pieces here. Um, and Danny has many failed Western Digital and HDST. Um, um, Markus wanted to paste an interesting link that didn't get through. I don't. I en I enabled and allow all YouTube comments. There. That's not limited. I'm mean, not sure why YouTube is um, limiting that like that but uh, just uh, pasted without some slash between uh, server and url there between domain and uh, url or something and um, yeah that's it for this video i hope you learned something um, and uh, then he says seagate yeah i also have one seagate that didn't fail yet though but i guess the four gigabyte drive doesn't really count from 1999 but um, Marco said the three and a half inch three terabyte. Yeah, so this is even a, this is not three and a half. This is two and a half inch, right? So yeah, maybe the four terabyte, two and a half inch are potentially even more famous for failing. Anyway, that's it for this update. I hope you appreciate and learn something, and I hope to see you soon for the next videos and live streams to come.